Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Tasmin Motara, the MEC of the Gauteng Department of Infrastructure Development, popularly known as the Roti Queen. <laughs> Ms. Motara is a person involved in governance and politics for quite a long time. She's been right through, started as a youth league member within the ANC Youth League, SASCO, and went through the ranks. It really is a pleasant thing to see that government at all levels have introduced younger, energetic, um, committed people like herself. She comes from a family that is well known also within politics, um, from a very good breed. And the thing that pleases me most is that Ms. Mutara is an activist politician. She doesn't sit in her desk. She's almost everywhere, anywhere, even when there's fires in communities, she's the first one to be seen. Indeed, my pleasure to welcome to you this morning Ms. Tasmin Roti Queen Mutara. <laughs> You're welcome, ma'am. No, thank you, Program Director. Um, let me take this opportunity to greet you all to the Global Lift and, Ex um, and Escalator Expo Africa organizers, industry leaders, local, continental, and international buyers, as well as exhibitors, members of the local and international media, Guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Again, thank you for inviting me to this um, inaugural Global Lift and Escalator Expo, particularly as we draw closer to the end of Women's Month, uh, which we celebrate during and commemorate during August here in South Africa. It is time for us as a nation to reflect honestly on the strides and progress made in comparison to the promises made about women's emancipation and development. Definitely more needs to be done, and this sector is one of the examples where I believe we must make more commitments and be deliberate about the participation of women in the design and construction, and more importantly, the maintenance of lifts and escalators. As the Gauteng Provincial Government and government in general, we fully recognize this expo as a groundbreaking platform whose richness is in shared knowledge, research capacity, expertise and innovation on mass mobility infrastructure in public buildings stand to benefit the work that we do on behalf of our, com our communities. This work also stands to benefit the economies of our region and the African continent as a whole. We are confident that the Expo's ability to produce cutting solutions and benchmarks that will put our province in a stronger position to not just respond to the challenges of our rapidly growing urban province, but also to adapt to the rising fourth industrial revolution. As the member of the Executive Council responsible for infrastructure development and property management in the province, my mandate is to ensure the delivery of public infrastructure, or social infrastructure as we refer to it on whose backbone rests the rendering of socio-economic services such as education, health, social services, recreation, amongst others, with most of the public service points located in high-rise buildings. Um, almost all uh, provincial government departments are in high-rise buildings without exceptions. So the safety of both our communities as well as government officials who render such services depends on the functionality and the reliability of our lifts and escalator infrastructure. This conference could therefore not have come at a better time as we also advance the transformation agenda in our country against the backdrop of years of deliberate disenfranchis disenfranchisement of the majority of the people in our country. The 25th anniversary of the birth of our democratic dispensation therefore calls on all of us to join hands in bringing about meaningful growth and development, whilst also keeping up with the latest developments and trends in the global arena of which we are an important nodal point. And I can't thank you more and thank you enough for choosing South Africa as an entry point to the African continent for such a platform. 
there are very few female lift technicians in this country and I believe the same applies in the continent as a whole. While I'm here, let me share a story of our own female lift technician. In South Africa, we have Ms. Jackie Hokamilwe, the founder of Ngoba Business Enterprise, who joined the lift industry as an apprentice lift technician in 1993. 13 years ago, she qualified as a lift technician, becoming the first female in South Africa to have qualified as a lift technician. In 2008, Jackie became the first female in South Africa to be registered as a lift inspector, having received approval from the Engineering Council of South Africa, as well as the Lift Inspectors Association of South Africa. In the area of escalators, we do not have any females who are blazing the trails and making their entry into the industry. This can't be, not, definitely not after 25 years of dem democracy, and we have to do more to not just improve, but just change the, this face completely. We can only do this by being deliberate and working towards an impact and changing the face of the sector. So definitely, in South Africa, we have a peculiar situation of not only race, but gender parity and gender discrimination plays a significant role in any space um, that, has, that, has, that has had years to be able to establish itself, to be able to be um, grounded in what it does, and we've got to transform it, but we can only do it by being very deliberate about it. So sadly, we are yet to find more women to follow in the footsteps of this trailblazer so that we can change the narrative around gender transformation in the sector. The sector must make itself accessible and interesting to young women for it to, be meaningful, to make a meaningful contribution to gender transformation. I therefore implore you that as you deliberate on the state of the sector as a whole, that we also begin to start making commitments to ensure that more women are assisted to enter the sector in all its levels and areas of speciality. Let's take it upon ourselves to go back and start recruiting, training and investing in educating more female technicians, engineers and designers. It is a well-known fact that the continent is young and the continent is female. Let's be bold in our plans to get not only more young people into the sector, but that we create partnerships with education institutions in order to create more professionals for this and other sectors. As our built environment continues to grow due to the commissioning of more multi-story buildings, as well as the modernization of old lifts in some of our old properties, we expect the demand for technical skills to grow. We are therefore expecting the industry to invest more to ensure skilled engineers and technicians. Let's also use this time to honestly discuss the participation of local companies in the sector. And of course, given the history and the fact that South Africa for a very, very long time was out of the global economic space, we can only understand that for decades, this sector has designed, produced and installed lifts and our escalators using technologies from outside the continent and outside the country. Indeed, we cannot claim to be enjoying the same growth in the construction sector as we did during the mid to late 20, uh, 2000s in the lead up to the 2010 FIFA World Cup. But we cannot ignore the contribution that the sector is making, especially in these difficult financial times. So as much as the economy is shrinking, um, that the economy is not growing, construction as an industry still has a role to play and it still does contribute. It's probably one of the few sectors that continues to contribute even though we have low growth. Stat South Africa's second quarter figures suggest a 2.3% uptick in construction activity and the construction tide may rise sooner rather than later. Research giant Fitch Solutions also expects 2019 to be the year the sector finally emerges from recession. So that's quite good news. And I think government has got to come on board. And even if we look at some of, um, some of, the, some of the, the things that we want to introduce as government, we note that the contribution and the direct investment f through the fiscus into the construction industry has to continue and grow. In 29, its 2019 Sub-Saharan Africa Construction Growth Report expects year-on-year -year growth of 6.8%. So this is good news for anybody who's in the built industry um, from end to end, any of the, 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 any of the sectors that contribute as well as complement the sector. And consider that the total infrastructure spend is expected 
to total 855 billion rand over the next three years, which is an increase of 2.5% from last year. Just in the province, we have committed to invest 60 billion over the next five years on infrastructure spend directly from the provincial, um, from provincial coffers, and this will draw in investment even from the private sector. Um, so we've committed 60 billion over the next five years, so we'll definitely see an increase just in the space uh, of, of the province. For ourselves, just for, for, for in the immediate, we are going to invest a tune of, to the tune of 9.6 billion rand in the immediate, as the, just as the province, uh, for social infrastructure and then a further 1.8 billion for economic infrastructure um, in the next financial year, just as a province. So this is also just to demonstrate our commitment towards contributing in the invest, investing in the sector simply because it is looking as though it's going to increase um, what it can do in terms of economic growth. So these numbers bode well for the industry and other industries downstream, and they are a huge target for economic growth, and we have to work together to achieve this. Less than a month after I took up office, a woman died in a building in downtown Johannesburg as a result of a lift malfunctioning. The lift did a free fall from the 26th floor, plunging her to her death. Upon investigation, it was established that a cable had snapped. Such deaths in the 21st century are just not necessary, yet they continue to happen both in South Africa and elsewhere. For me, her death pointed to the lack of maintenance and the necessary safety regimen on something as important as a lift, especially in a building. This and other stories of people randomly getting stuck in lifts, which happens to me quite often, should give all of us sleepless nights because a lapse in safety checks can mean the difference between life and death. And of course we know there's no, there's no cost to life. You can't quantify that kind of loss. So the construction industry has a great need for a strategic roadmap to embrace not only female development but also youth development so that we can all unleash our full potential. When we invest in safety, we are investing the lifespan of both our assets of our assets both as a department and a sector in general. The lifespan of any facility is dependent on various factors and the conditions of lifts and escalators is a contributing element. Not only does this affect the safety of those who use the facility, it also affects productivity. So you can imagine getting stuck in a lift for four to five hours, productivity just grinds to a halt. And in an industry such as the, the the, the public sector, you can't afford any downtime in productivity. A high-rise building without properly functioning lifts or escalators has a ripple effect, and the timeliest maintenance of these installations is just a non-negotiable. Ever since my portfolio was expanded to include property management, I've made it my task to ask the team to present their plans for this aspect of our work, as well as how we can strengthen occupational health and safety by incorporating it into our department plans. South Africa boasts several of the tallest buildings, currently the Carlton Center in Johannesburg, if, I hope you've seen it. It stands proud at 223 meters high, with 50 floors, and has held the title of the tallest building since 1973. Advanced development is significantly localized and can be spotted in major cities such as Johannesburg, Centen, where we are, Cape Town, Durban, Pretoria, and Port Elizabeth. South Africa's construction industry remains a major economic engine and the property market has remained resilient in spite of challenging conditions. In October, we are opening the continent's tallest building right here in Santon. So it's quite an exciting time. Um, Carlton Centre will then lose its title since 1973. This can therefore only be a testament to our capability as a sector to deliver on technology that will meet the ever-changing needs of spatial planning. Your sector is therefore right at the center of any development by government, by the private sector, and even public-private partnerships, which we'll be entering into as this provincial government over the next five, year, five years to redevelop what we're going to refer to as Kopenong, which is the government precinct in the CBD. At the center of our maintenance strategy is occupational health and safety, and as I've said, it's non-negotiable, especially in the 21st century. Lifts play an integral part of that, and as a department, we'll be looking at ways to create incubation programs 
for young people and local players in order to ensure that more and more of our products are designed, ultimately manufactured, as well as serviced by local service providers. As our asset register grows with each facility we deliver as a department, we are matching it with the necessary skills and capacity that's needed to maintain these buildings and facilities. Economic transformation, including the city that President Ramaphosa spoke about, could easily be built in this province. So the fact that we're looking to build a new city, the fact that we have got a number of cities in the province, doesn't mean that we must be excluded from the opportunity to build this new city. We do have the infrastructure to, sort, to support such a grand plan. We also have investment opportunities to back it up. In order to breathe life into this dream city, though, the country will need you, as well as the youth of South Africa, in the sector. Our future lies in the heads of the youth. And for my part as the MEC of Infrastructure Development and Property Management, I undertake to take you on board so that we together can deliver infrastructure that is smart, safe, and one that speaks to the future. My department is undergoing many, many changes. And soon enough, the Premier of Gauteng Mr. David Makura will pass a proclamation that will see us take on the added mandate of property management. So not only are we building for social needs, but the property management is key to our mandate. We've got to look at how we use our assets to be able to turn them into economically viable, um, viable assets for the province, so that we also make a contribution directly into the pro provincial purse, and that we expand and even build more social infrastructure by contributing um, to what is available. This change is more than just about the name of the department. It also heralds a new era and opportunities for everybody to benefit from opportunities that will be created. Built in this new mandate is the need to increase our internal capacity as a department, delivering 360 degree solution to meet the needs of the economy. Even though the population of the province is growing, we are not receiving more land space, but are in fact facing even more competition from various land use needs of our communities, meaning we require innovative ideas for infrastructure development using technology and environmentally friendly methods of building and catering to the ever-growing need for accommodation. So even in social housing, social housing is going to go up as opposed to the flat sprawl that we've had for such a long period of time, just given the fact that we don't have that land available. So in conclusion, I'd really like to wish you well as you continue to deliberate on the different topics set out for this year's Expo. I also look forward to attending the next one, where resolutions taken this year will be reflected on, and progress on promises we're making can be discussed. May you walk away with a clear vision of what you and your respective areas of specialization can and should do in order to achieve goals that I'm confident you will set for yourselves as well as ourselves as a continent. Five years from now, we must have witnessed a definite shift with tangible results. Thank you very much. MEC is available to take one or two questions on the exciting presentation that she's made. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. My name is Shem from Elevator World. Uh, I'm just wondering from the perspective of uh, uh, Gauteng province and the department that you're in charge of, specifically what, what are some of um, the, 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 the measures probably that you have in place that can entice um, the people who are before you here, the, the manufacturers and suppliers of the vertical transportation product. I mean, the market, the industry as a whole, how are you enticing them to invest here to, to you know, um, uh, you know, take advantage of the new infrastructure, the infrastructure that you have talked about and the upcoming ones? Any other question? The back? No? Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so, so what we've done ourselves together with our partner department in this space, which is economic development, is we are going to also look at um, uh, what my colleague likes to refer to as sweeteners for the industry. So looking at 
um, preferential rates, preferential, anything that is preferential to entice anybody to invest. Putting up infrastructure, um, also driving investment in particular zones, what we refer to in the province as the five corridors of the province. So being able to um, put up um, support infrastructure for you to be able to invest. Um, we've also made commitments on what we are going to do in terms of the pro what we want to refer to as a five-year project pipeline. That project pipeline will be able to give confidence and also be able to give the industry certainty as to the plans of, of provincial government. So you, from the onset, will be able to see that for the next five years, this is what we will invest where and um, geographically where, but also the type of investment that's going to be made. That one gives certainty to the industry so that it's not a risk that if you come and put up a facility, manufacturing plant, um, training center, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, any type of investment will have definite government support because we would have planned properly for it over a five-year period. That's going to include um, plans of the private sector as well as plans of all the municipalities in the space. So it's not just provincial government. Um, I spoke about the, the precinct buildings. So, so that's a project of 18 bu buildings. One is going to be a brand new build because the Bank of Lisbon, as we all know, uh, burnt down, which was a property owned by the Department of Infrastructure. So that's going to be a replacement. But all 18 buildings are going to be refurbished. And as part of that, we'll need um, for a long period of time, um, a lot of capacity, technical skills, um, and just materials that will be injected into that. So there are a lot of avenues and spaces that industry and investors can look at choosing and identifying niche avenues and areas where they can enter to be able to service that project plan. So it will be for five years, but of course, that's how we want to plan going forward um, consistently, so that we give certainty to the market, we give certainty to investment, investors, and we also to be able to be more predictable about the type of investment and the economic spin-offs that we can, we can gauge over a period of, of time. So those are some of the things we are doing. We're working very, very closely with the Department of Economic Development also then in, as part of that project pipeline to say that we sit on a number of assets that can be repurposed, one, assets that can even be revalued for economic purposes with economic spin-offs and not just look at the state that only provides um, for social infrastructure only, but also has an opportunity to play in the economic space as, an, as a key player in the, in the property space as well. Um, and I then spoke about the housing. So we have a housing backlog of, I'm not sure what the figure is now, but there is a decision that social housing must go up. Um, and if we provide for that backlog, we also have the biggest amount of um, higher education facilities or institutions in the province that need, and we've started that process of partnering with the institutions of higher learning to be able to address their needs of student accommodation. So there are a number of aspects, but I think the biggest thing that investors need is certainty of government support. And then, like I said, what my, what my um, colleague refers to as sweetness, that will entice you to invest in a space as opposed to outside of the province. Thank you. Okay. We have one more, um, one more question. Actually, it's the lady that's the first um, woman lady that she would like to give you, uh, uh, has a question for you. Jackie. Hey, thank you. Good morning and good morning all and thank you for, uh, to the organizers of this exhibition because I would like to believe that this is the platform that we all have been looking for so that we can come and uh, put our ways together and we can ask the people who are playing in this space, you know, about opportunities that, that can be available. Uh, thank you, MEC, for honoring, and honoring me, number one, and also honoring this event. Uh, my question is, 
uh, how, to be, how do we become privy to the information of the developments that are going to be occurring into your department so that we know what are the objectives and the timelines and the schedules so that in us as business, as the lift industry, if we can package ourselves, we can prepare our business so that by the time when those things happen, we are also ready, we are not left behind. Who do we talk to such information? And question number two, which is just short. I heard that you said uh, property is also become part of your division. We, I own a training center. Where I've, I've, you know, I'm proud to say I've got your NYS NY students here who are in my training center. You know, space and accommodation is one of the things that is really killing us as a business. How do we then uh, make uh, ourselves or we get the opportunity of getting the space through the, the buildings that are not used, that are in your department. And what is the procedure thereof? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jackie. I'll start with the last one. Um, so what we've done is we're in a process now of um, sort of developing a register of unoccupied, either unoccupied or our tenants have no use for the building anymore. So not far from where we are, as an example, what, there was a school which is now vacated. Um, the Department of Education doesn't need, need it anymore. We are then going to open the package it and open it to the market. Um, we will, we were busy putting together um, terms of reference, the market, private sector, um, and even public partners who want to be able to uh, make use of the property. We will then engage with the market on a um, lease, possibilities of leasing or possibilities of repurposing. So we've done that with the institutions of higher learning and that then opened us up to the opportunities that we have to be able to do that the same with either um, land that is in prime areas that can't be developed for one or other reason for social um, infrastructure. It's either too small or it's either um, in an area that is not zoned for social infrastructure. So we'll be packaging all of that together and opening it up to the market, for the market to come and say what it is that they want. Make use of the buildings, repurpose them, or enter into lease agreements with the department. So that's what, and that's what we are going to focus on over the next five years, um, just on the property management space. Um, so that we're not just building and have a responsibility to build and maintain social infrastructure. Um, but we also are able to, to, to gain economically um, from what we have, given the fact that tenants and client departments no longer have a use for either school or clinic um, because of the location more than anything else. Um, so we've started a, quite a number of engagements with the industry, with different sectors in the industry um, to be able to give them updates on where our plans are, what we want to do over the next five years, what we want to do um, in the next financial year, what we want to, do to, want to do in the medium term, which is the next three years. So that definitely you have, um, you have insight as to what plans are not only from the department, but even coming from the pr private sector, um, who we engage with all the time. And we do want to be able to have pr the private sector ready for any of our plans. So we want to start engaging um, sector by sector. Tomorrow I have an engagement. I know that you've been invited to my engagement tomorrow. Just so that we have different conversations and begin to express where um, our investment is going to take place. What is the nature of that investment? Um, the plans in terms of timelines. So we're going to engage all the time. I think I did say, speak about the five-year project pipeline. It's going to have timelines. It's going to indicate in which, what we refer to as an economic corridor. So will it be in the central? Will it be in the west, in the east, in the northern corridors? Um, so that we're also able to support, or so that we're also able to give enough time and enough information for industry, as you're saying, to ready itself. So we'll engage well in advance before that, before the end of this year, that project pipeline will be made available, even for engagement from the sector to say, 
for us to do this, um, we need this from you or we need this from one of your partner departments um, for us to be ready when, um, when we, we take off with those. Um, but for instance, so I do speak about the Kopenong project quite a lot because that's in its final stage of approval from National Treasury. It is a triple uh, public-private partnership. It will be rolled out in four phases. So once the National Treasury approval is finalized, we will then um, open it up for, for bids from the private sector. Um, so that's an exciting one to watch because it's in four phases, it's 18 buildings, everything has been secured um, and it will run for five to maximum of eight years. Um, the project has to be complete. Um, so that then gives certainty, like I said, certainty to the industry, certainty, certainty to business, um, SMMEs, and you are able to plan, forward plan, um, what are possibilities of participation over um, the next five to ten years of what not only the department is doing, but what the department is coordinating in the space. Thank you.